Hello everyone, my name is Darya Ishlar and I am a group product manager in personalization team at Spotify. And our team is responsible for everyone's favorite products like Daily Mix, Discover Weekly, uh, Release Radar and Personalized personalize Radio and many more. Um, today we'll talk about what it means to become a machine learning product manager, which is a new role that is becoming increasingly popular in the recent years. Uh, before jumping in, I would like to talk about uh, myself a little bit. I started my career as a software engineer and then transitioned into product management later on. And I actually worked in different industries uh, from government, finance, cloud computing, um, e-commerce, and now I am in music industry. Uh, I also have used ML in um, different cases. I use ML to predict potential missile attacks. I use ML to predict the utility usage, um, to detect fraud, to predict the downtime of certain hardware components. Um, moving into consumer products, I use ML to provide personalized website experiences. And I also use ML to create and understand natural languages. Um, I also used ML now in Spotify to understand your taste and provide you uh, personalized audio content. And if I can tell you one thing about my experience with ML, uh, what I can tell is ML is only one tool that you can potentially use. It's not the end goal. It's not the product. Unless you are a product manager who is responsible for building an infrastructure for other teams to leverage ML. Um, and oftentimes the goal is really about either solving a user problem or solving a business problem. And in an ideal case, solving both. Um, in an easy, delightful, scalable, and the cost effective way. Uh, for example, in e-commerce, the goal is to help you to find the content that, or the product that you are looking for, or providing you a personalized experience on the website, or in customer service case, the goal is to give you an experience so that you can reach out to the customer service agent as quickly as possible, or you can get to a place where you can find answers as easily and as quickly as possible. And from business perspective, the goal is really around uh, reducing the cost for the company by algorithms, because then you don't have to talk to a customer service agent and you can get your answers by algorithms. Uh, therefore, it is really important for you as a product manager to understand um, what your product and business goals are, what user challenges that you are dealing with, and make a decision if the ML is the right tool to solve that problem. And also use your skills to make your product thrive, which brings me to three focus areas in this presentation. Uh, first of all, you are a product manager first. Uh, no matter which industry you are in, the team size, the company size, you need to have a solid product management experience to be a successful machine learning product manager. Um, the most important skill to me here is understanding user and the business problem. This is going to be very crucial, especially when you are managing a machine learning product because you need to understand if the problem is best solved with machine learning. And finally, if your answer is yes, machine learning is the way to go, then you need, of course, additional skills uh, so that you can better execute on your product. Uh, this is one of the most um, important questions that I get from folks who would like to become a product manager or who would like to become a machine learning product manager. Oftentimes they ask which skills they need to acquire to be a successful machine learning product manager. And actually, the answer is really simple. In order for you to be a successful machine learning product manager, you first need to be a successful product manager. To me, uh, this definition of product management from Marty Kagan is simplest, yet the most uh, comprehensive definition of product management. The job of a product manager is to discover a product, 
that is valuable, usable, and feasible. So for you, it is really important to constantly think about user challenges um, and then make sure those challenges are addressed. You have to ask yourself what they are complaining the most, what their day-to-day -day look like, uh, what are the things that they are most frustrated about. And then you have to constantly create hypotheses around those problems and validate or devalidate with them all the time until you get a clear answer about the true user problem. And it is really important for you to use some of the tools like uh, focus group studies, interviews, or sometimes going into data environment uh, and observe them to understand what their true problem is. Because it is not uncommon to hear from a user about a specific problem that they're having or a specific feature request. But when you really dig deeper, you oftentimes find a different problem. Uh, once you come up with the problem, you then need to come up with the solution options. And again, test them and validate them, whether they are indeed delivering value to the user and also um, helping them to solve their problem. The other thing that is important here is you need to make sure your solution is usable by them. If no one understands your product and how it works, believe me, no one will use it. But your job as a product manager doesn't end here. It is really important for you to understand the big picture. And I really see, especially from junior product managers, they spend a lot of time as a product owner, which is a role or which is a title that came to our lives with agile product development. They always think that their job is just doing a prioritization and making sure the use cases and user stories are ready for the next sprint. Um, it is an important job, but I see product management broader than this. In order for you to be a successful product manager, you also understand the business requirements and business needs. You need to understand what are the industry trends, who your competitors are, how your product or feature will help you to differentiate from the rest of the industry. What are the, um, what are the macroeconomic factors that you should be aware of? Um, what are the legal requirements that you should be aware of? For example, if you are planning to launch a product in the EU, you may need to consider GDPR requirements. Also, you need to understand your business needs. Um, do you have an activation problem? Do you have retention problem? Or do you have like churn problem? Um, and finally, you also need to think about whether your investment will help you to succeed in the future as well. You need to think about whether it will help you to scale your product in the future, whether it will help you to reuse those features or components in the future. So as a product manager, you also need to think about those big um, picture parts as well in order for you to be a successful product manager. Um, and also, you need to think about technical feasibility. Oftentimes, your um, technical folks will be your uh, best friends here. Uh, you need to think about whether the solution options that you are thinking or one of the solution options that you are thinking is the cheapest one, is the easiest to build one, or you need to think about how long it will take to build that, how it will scale after you got your first users. Um, and also you need to think about whether you have the right engineering skills in your organization. Uh, these are all necessary to be asked to decide if you are building a product that your customers and your users will love, and also you are making a product which will help your business to thrive. And once you have a good understanding of user and business problems, you can make a better call whether your problem is actually an ML problem. Because in the end, not every problem is a machine learning problem. So depending on your specific problem, ML can actually be solved in many ways, but ML is typically used when you need to provide enhanced user experience such as personalized features, uh, for their taste and help them achieve their tasks either easily, quickly, or safely. 
and you can use ML when your company needs to improve processes and reduce the cost. You can use ML to expand into new verticals by learning more about your users and figuring out new verticals that you can deliver value to your users. And the true problem understanding here will not only help you to decide whether ML is the right thing for you to think about, but it will also help which ML tool is the most useful, whether it is supervised or unsupervised learning, whether you are talking about regression or classification problem. And if you know that, yes, ML is the tool that will help you to solve your problem, you still need to think about whether ML is the best tool that will help you to solve the problem. And um, it is really important, again, for you to understand what you have in your team and what you don't have. And you need to understand the true nature of the problem. And you need to understand um, the data that you have or you may potentially acquire. So if you have, for example, sale or incomplete data, or um, if you can solve your problems in an easy way with simple if then else statements, maybe you don't need to consider ML as your go-to tool. Um, or if you need to be super transparent and 100% accurate, again, ML may not be the best tool for you to use. But sometimes the problems that you are solving is complex enough that simple heuristics cannot solve it efficiently. And you may also have growing data that your product need to adapt to and behave differently depending on the data that you acquire. So in these cases, using ML can help your product. But these are the things potentially make you consider that ML is a good solution. But remember, as a product manager, you can also think about the feasibility and trade-offs. So those decisions you are making are the decisions you need to make about ML and also around ML. As a product manager, you are not thinking about the model itself, but you are making a lot of decisions around ML and about the product itself. Um, when deciding if you would like to use ML, you need to make sure you have a clear data strategy. Uh, it is important for you to have enough accurate, representative, and unbiased data to train your models on. You also need to think about how to collect the data if you don't have that data. Um, what type of infrastructure, processes, or pipelines you need. So those are the things that you should be considering. You should also consider when to update that data. Are you going to update the data every single day? Are you going to update it weekly? So those are all the decisions that you should be considering before starting the execution. And ML is a very iterative process and it's a long journey. And you need to do a pre-work before you start building the ML solutions. Uh, second thing, once you define your data strategy, I would highly recommend going back and thinking about your product goal what you are trying to achieve, what is your success criteria. Uh, you need to consider all of those things and you need to define a baseline. You need to make sure you have a clear way to measure success against a certain criteria. And you need to make sure you have the right tools and processes to measure that success. And as a next thing, this is also another important thing for you to consider especially if you are responsible for making hiring decision. As a PM, you are responsible for the product goal, you are responsible for defining the success criteria, but your technical counterparts are going to be responsible for actually discovering and analyzing the data, building those data pipelines, doing a lot of feature engineering, selecting or optimizing the algorithms, doing offline and online tests. So make sure you have the right skill set in your team before jumping that ML is the right solution for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Your product goal and success criteria should also help you to think about what is your tolerance level. So for example, if you're building a cancer detection algorithm, you may 
be willing to accept false positive because you would probably like to be on the most cautious, cautious side and you don't want to skip any cancer cases by accident. But in certain cases, you may not need that. You also need to consider the fact that in certain cases, there is no room for margin of error. You have to be 100% accurate. So you need to think about those cases and how much you are willing to accept those margin of errors. Uh, you also need to think about if your product needs to be 100% transparent to your users and your stakeholders. If you need to parse every single data point, and if you need to explain all of those things to your users and your stakeholders, again, ML may not be the right tool because at the end of the day, it's the black box and it's hard to um, reverse engineer and figure out all the decision points that are being made. And also as a use, as a product manager, you need to decide how your product behave around ML. So consider that you build a model and you put in your product, then you need to figure out how people will interact that, how people will give you signals. How are you gonna use those signals? How are you gonna process all of those signals and incorporate into your machine learning models? So those are the things that you need to think about as a product manager. And some of them are related to ML directly. Some of them may not be directly related to the machine learning models. And at the end of the day, what you are really doing is figuring out whether all of those investments will give you enough return. So you are calculating ROI. You need to make sure um, you are gaining enough that will justify the investment. If you are putting a lot of time and effort to build a model to increase your retention rate, for example, and after spending six or nine months, if your gain is only 0.1%, maybe it is not worth it. So you should think ahead to make sure the ROI that you are getting will something that you can accept as a, as a product manager. So here, we pretty much did not talk anything ML specific. Um, and all of those skills to me are really important regardless of whether you are a machine learning product manager or a product manager. Um, but if you think that machine learning is something that you need to build to help your products become more successful, then I found some skills really useful to help you be better at executing on your product. So I would say the biggest plus if you have at this stage is being comfortable with data and understanding how data system works. Again, I get a lot of questions around the skills needed to become a machine learning product manager. And I also get a lot of questions whether someone needs computer science or data science degree. The simple answer is no, but you need to understand the concepts well enough so that you can translate a user request into something that engineers can process. And you can also do the opposite. You can talk to your engineers, understand all of those technical details and um, come up with a conclusion and share that conclusion with your users. But in order to do that, you don't need a computer science or data science degree. Second thing that I found super useful when you are a machine learning product manager is being familiar with the experimentation process. So until you get the model right, you have to run a lot of experiments. You, you will run a lot of experiments offline and online. Uh, you need to make sure your models are performing well. The accuracy is similar to what you initially expected. Also, your product or business metrics are moving in the direction that you wanted to. But in order to get there, you are going to run a lot of experiments. So as a PM, you should be comfortable the fact that it will take time. And also as a PM, you should define the success criteria and let your um, tech research, data science, data science and machine learning teams can go and figure out. And therefore, you should have a really good communication with them. Uh, you define 
the success criteria, as I said, and led them to explore and come up with the best possible models that will help you to solve your problems. The next thing that I think is super useful is a good understanding of basic statistics. Again, you don't need to have a statistics degree, but it is important for you to understand the concepts like false positives, false negatives, what is regression, uh, what is precision and recall. And they will help you to be a better translator between non-technical and technical folks. Since you need to be a translator, you need to have a good communication skills and you specifically need to be good at uh, explaining the models to your users and to your stakeholders. Otherwise, it will be super hard for you to get buy-in from them and you will not be able to explain every single decision point in the algorithm like the traditional rule-based models. But you still need to explain the inputs the assumptions that you are making when collecting those inputs, the outputs and what those outputs mean for your user and for your stakeholders. Um, especially when you talk to uh, non-technical folks, it is really important for you not to talk in statistical terms, but convert them to something human readable. Um, for example, instead of sharing statistical terms, or like the predictions, confidence levels, margin of errors, you can simply say, for example, these users are 2x most likely to consume an audio content that is unfamiliar to them, which is easier to comprehend by non-technical folks. And since the models are black boxes, one good strategy is always start with simple models and make sure you understand it, make sure your stakeholders and users understand it, and then expand into more complex models. So before finishing up, I really would like to show how these three pillars are put in practice with a Spotify use case. So for radio, radio is a personalized product in Spotify. Um, the user needs may be if they like Paco de Lucia, like me, the user needs maybe, I would, like to listen or, I would like to listen songs and artists that are similar to Paco de Lucia. And for Spotify, our goal is to make listeners enjoy the radio and help listeners to discover new artists. Then as a product manager, I can think about the success criteria as being session length to, sh to basically measure if listeners are actually listening radio and also the new artists discovered to make sure we are actually helping users to discover new artists. If I decide the product goal and if I decide the success metrics, then I would go and ask myself, do I really want radio to show different results to different users? And do or can I create better experiences if I understand user needs and give them a personalized experience? And I can also ask whether I have or the Spotify has growing user and listener data that I can use. So if your answer is yes, then you can potentially think ML is a solution, but still you have to ask a lot of question. So is the data that I'm going to use unbiased or representative, or do I have the data to predict the similarity between artists? And even if we, I don't have the data, do we have the pipelines to collect that data? So those are the questions that I should ask as a next step. And then uh, once we start building the model, then we need to make sure models are performing in a way that we originally expected. So you can run offline tests to make sure you have the right accuracy level. You, you then um, ask yourself, what are the precision and recall? And then you can launch this to production and do online tests and see if you're actually seeing any improvements in session length or new artists discovered. So you need to make sure your models are performing as you wanted them to perform. Um, as I said, product manager's role is also 
um, making it many decisions, not just around, not just about ML, but also around ML. So you should be making decisions like how many unfamiliar songs we will show to listeners. When do we update the tracks? When should radio end? Or do I need to end the radio at some point? And which artist should appear in the cover? So this is a personalized playlist. So you need to make sure that the artist that you are showing is relevant to your listeners. Um, you also need to think about how listeners will interact with the playlist, which buttons I should be putting and where and how, and you should make a decisions around how to collect that signal and how you will incorporate that signal into your models. You also need to make a decision around localization. Do we need to localize it? Um, and also you need to make a decision about the launch. Which regions do we need to launch at first? Are there any government or legal restrictions that I should be thinking about? Once you ask all of those questions, and believe me, these are just a small subset of the questions that you can potentially ask to yourself, you then probably come up with a good product. And this is pretty much how we are thinking about personalized radio in Spotify right now. So again, if you have any questions around product management or machine learning, or if you are interested in roles at Spotify, please reach out to me from this um, email address. And I hope you found this content useful. Thank you.